This is a red hot ball glowing at around 700 degrees Celsius. Now if I hand it to my assistant, we can be certain that it'll give him life altering third degree burns, but we can also be certain that it will not heat his hand up hotter than the ball itself. The second law of thermodynamics guarantees that heat always flows from a hotter object to a cooler one. Something can't get hotter than the source heating it. But let's check if this is always true. This is a handheld infrared laser emitting 980 nanometer wavelength light. You can see that there actually is laser light here when I shine it on this infrared sensor card. So how hot could I make something with this laser? Based on the second law, you'd assume it couldn't heat anything above the temperature of the infrared light itself. But how hot is infrared light? Well, light doesn't have a temperature. It's an electromagnetic wave that carries energy away from things that do have a temperature. For example, this thermal imaging camera can tell me the temperature of the objects I'm looking at based on the electromagnetic radiation coming off the object. When I shine my laser at it, it doesn't tell me it's hot. So it's off right now. The highest temperature we're at is 91 degrees Fahrenheit. That's my hand right there. Turn on the laser. And literally no increase in the hottest point. Right up to the camera and I don't see any increase. When I shine my laser at it, it doesn't tell me it's hot. It says it's just above room temperature. But watch this, if I just shine my infrared laser at something that absorbs it, I can get it to start to smoke. And if we look at it through the thermal imaging camera, I can see the heat path of the laser heating things up. In fact, I found if I take this same laser and shine it at the vein of my radiometer, it instantly makes it glow white hot with a full incandescent visible spectrum. This is crazy. I'm shining lower energy infrared light and getting out higher energy visible light. Imagine if we shine 10 million of these in the same spot. Hmm, now that's an idea. Let's take a little trip. So this is a 10 kilowatt resonator here. Did you hear me? 10,000 watts. This is 10 million times more powerful than my handheld laser. And what happens when you take 10,000 watts of power and concentrate it to an area smaller than a pinpoint? Well, you can literally vaporize steel. <laughs> the amount of energy in this laser light is insane. For example, look at this shot here. You can see the laser instantly cut through the steel and then it starts shining on the bottom and hitting the melted metal below. This also instantly glows white hot from a few feet away from the laser. Look at this laser just cutting through the steel like it's butter. I can't get over the fact how powerful this laser is to just completely vaporize the still in an instant. So I think we've made it very clear that we can easily heat things much hotter than the source temperature using lasers. But there's nothing special about lasers to make this happen. In fact, you can see this fact at home in your kitchen. In your microwave, you turn on a magnetron and it spins and generates microwaves at around 2.4 gigahertz. The magnetron itself is only around 100 degrees Celsius. These microwaves have 100,000 times less energy per photon compared to visible light. But you can easily heat something hot enough to give off visible light with microwaves. So what's the problem here? The laws of thermodynamics tell us that we can't heat something hotter than the source, but we're clearly heating something up hotter than the source in the microwave and with these lasers. Well, in order to reconcile this, we have to first dive into what temperature actually means. But before we continue, we saw how lasers can direct a ton of energy into one spot. But what if we could apply that to cleaning our teeth? Well, now you can. This is the Sucus Neos 2. It's the world's first two-in-one electric toothbrush with a built-in water flosser. Now I have a water flosser, but I never use it. It's this huge machine that has to sit on my counter all the time and it's super messy and sprays everywhere, so I literally never use it. But I have to tell you, this product completely blows my mind and it's way better than my regular toothbrush and water flosser. It's so much more convenient than a traditional water pick. You just fill it up with water like this and then it starts pumping out the water jet with plenty of force. It's so convenient and takes up so much less space than a traditional water pick. It's a powerful 0.6 millimeter water stream at 124.3 PSI pressure. 
so it removes 35 times more stains than 100% of the plaque. And with up to 30 days of battery life on a single charge, you won't have to worry about recharging anytime soon. It's convenient and portable. So if you want to try out the Sucus Neos 2, you can click the link in my description for a special Black Friday sale for yourself or your loved ones. Now let's get back to our experiment. So a glowing hot red ball could never make something hotter than itself. Sticking a bar in lava could never make the bar hotter than the lava. And concentrating sunlight with a magnifying glass can never make an object hotter than the surface of the sun. This is unwaveringly true, but a laser can be focused to be hotter than the laser and a magnetron can be focused to heat things hotter than the magnetron. So what's the difference? Well, remember that a red hot ball and lava and the sun are all thermal sources of energy, meaning that the electromagnetic energy they emit follows a very specific curve. This curve is determined by Planck's law, and the shape of this curve is dependent on the temperatures of the object. Because these curves are so predictable based on the object's temperature, we don't need to worry about how much energy something is emitting at each frequency. We can just look at its temperature. So when two objects are at thermal equilibrium, meaning they have the same temperature, the amount of energy being absorbed and emitted by the two objects is equal. For thermal sources, you don't need to do a full energy balance because the energy flux is intrinsically tied to the temperature through this predictable spectrum. But this all breaks down when the Thing that's emitting the radiation is not a thermal source of energy. Non-thermal sources like lasers and magnetrons don't follow the same predictable emission spectrum. Instead, they're pumped with additional energy like electricity in your kitchen or batteries in your laser. This means that energy is continually being added to the system rather than just being radiated based on existing temperature. In fact, there's actually no limit to how hot you can make something with a laser. There's only practical effects like how tight a beam you can focus it to. This is a very interesting point. It means that in order to heat something up, it doesn't matter the frequency of incoming radiation. It could be visible light, radio waves or microwaves. If you pump in enough energy, you can get that object to an indefinitely hot temperature, as long as the object can absorb that frequency. So a thermal energy source will heat an object up until their temperatures are equal. At that point of equal temperatures, that means the same amount of energy being absorbed by the object is also being released by the object due to its own black body radiation. But for a non-thermal energy source, it will heat an object up until the object is radiating as much energy as it's receiving. And this can be at a temperature far above the temperature of the source. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something from this. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section and I'll see you next time.